progress. And uh, we're going to begin. So I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask Melissa for roll call. Perfect, thank you. Um, Chair McEwen. Chair McEwen. Oh, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Vice Chair Schmidt. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Crampton. Commissioner Gibson. Commissioner McCarthy. Here. Commissioner Ono. And Commissioner Spangler. Absent, thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to have a presentation on the status of Parks and Recreation Department operations for February through March of this year. And Karen, I think you're going to present this one. Thank you for that lovely introduction. We are going to discuss February and March. And we have, if you notice that we have our little rabbit on the cover and that event took place April 1st. So we're sneaking in April 1st as well. I'd like to start off with Laguna Grande Park. Um, the JPA met on March 30th and we adopted the Laguna Grande Regional Park Trail and Maintenance Strategy Project environmental document. And we adopted the Laguna Grande Regional Park Trail and Maintenance Strategy. Uh, the next steps will include certification and the permit process where the cities of Seaside, Monterey, and the Regional Park District will work with their respective legislative bodies to certify the environmental document. Then uh, a multitude of permits must be obtained before any significant maintenance or capital improvement projects are implemented. Uh, the various permits include the California Coastal Commission Coastal Development Permit, a lake stream bed alteration permit from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, Clean Water Act Section 404 permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the Clean Water Act Section 401 certification from the Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board. We expect this process to take about one year. And next, I'd like to hand it over to Shannon. So this is also um, another project that's been in the works for a while, and it's been funded by NCIP. So thank you very much for NCIP. Uh, it is a RFP to develop a, the old Capitol site park master plan. Um, so it's been issued. The RFP has been issued. The deadline is approaching, and it'll be April 30th. We expect the total project time to be from July 1 through December 31st of this year. Um, and that uh, gives us time to get into contract and review all the proposals that we receive. So phase one will be a project kickoff, we'll document review and site visit by the selected firm. Um, and we anticipate that to be done by the end of July. And then we will have a community engagement phase, um, which we anticipate to be done by the end of August. And that will be potentially town hall meetings, emails, public outreach, um, reaching out to the neighborhoods, making sure we get plenty of public input on what they see as um, potential for the old capital site. Uh, phase three will be uh, receiving all the master plan designs um, options with also a full cost analysis for city staff review no later than mid-October. And then the final phase will be final formal presentations to both PRC and city council before December 31st, with hopefully an adoption of the proposed plan. Uh, so we're moving right along with that. Um, it will depend on what proposals are submitted and what that um, budget looks like because NCIP did fund the project, I think for um, 75,000 and we'll just have to see what actually uh, is proposed by these firms. So it's moving quite along and that's very positive and we're happy to see that going forward. Um, I think the next one is Louie. Wonderful. So we did some uh, planting, 122 plants, got our usual gophers. Uh, we removed a very large transient camp on Garden Court. Uh, we did some median cleanup uh, around the city um, and a lot of debris cleanup from all the storms still cleaning it up. Uh, we did a little landscape project over Jack's Park. Uh, we got a nice donation of some daffodil bulbs. Um, 
that we've put around the city and put some down Alvarado Street and they should be popping up shortly. Uh, we continued uh, our landscaping project at Montecito Fire Station and we did a nice little landscaping job behind the old uh, visitor center uh, at El Estero Park. We did DG and an ice tree planting back there, a little planted area. And we also did some major turf repairs from a grant um, at Solisto Ballpark. And we had our 66th annual cutting day. We gave away 125 tree seedlings. We had a lot of help from the Kiwanis as usual for, for the whole time that I've been here, the Kiwanis have been helping out at that and the Boy Scouts were a big help. We had about 300 people. The weather was fantastic uh, in between all the rain. We had a nice clear day and we plastered out a lot of plants and cuttings. Our forestry operations, uh, we've been running two contract crews probably for two months now, uh, trying to catch up. Um, CDF has helped out a little bit, but they've been busy in other areas. Uh, we're, we're pretty caught up on everything that is down and blocking pathways, except for possibly Huckleberry Hill, which we're, we have other problems out there with those paths out there. Uh, a lot of environmental things that we have to go through for that. So we've had 87 tree removal permits given out. We're, we're getting a call for a lot of permits. Uh, we've been pruning trees and pruning all the hazardous trees and we're shooting for a cal fire grant for fuel reduction also <clears throat> moving on to the recreation division um we are going to review um our special events field sports and community center programs the first one was we held our third annual bunny hop photo op uh and this year it, we moved it to colton hall lawn um it's the first time we've offered it there prior to that it was front in front of the dutra vasquez adobe um we had a great turnout we had probably 400 to 500 people in attendance the bunny photo opportunity was full with a wait list of 100 and there was 150 enrolled registered and then we still had a wait list and then we had people showing up wanting to also do a photo so um, you can see our bunny is very popular and actually looks just as good as any bunny you'll find anywhere else. <laughs> um, so it was the first time offered on Colton Hall lawn. It was a great day. We happened to pick the one day and that was not raining. Um, we added games and face painting. We had 124 children participate in our scavenger hunt and we're planning now to expand the event for spring 2024. So. This was an event that kind of developed out of COVID and has just grown since then. Um, and it's really uh, popular because families can actually come and enjoy the day and not have like this, their child trampled while trying to get <laughs> eggs, you know? It's um, so, and they, most families will do a bunny and egg hunt at, at home. So we're, we're capturing, they're all getting a very nice photo. Um, they're getting uh, two dozen eggs and a bunny plush. So it's, um, as well as all the other activities that we have planned. So field sports is still going extremely well. Our track and field program, which is being offered for the first time since uh, 2019 is full. It's being offered at MPC. It's um, 75 are enrolled, but we actually have a wait list of 43. And the reason for that is we just do not have enough part-time staff to run um, more kids. We'd love to the space allows for that. Uh, we just don't have the staff to do that. Uh, what's next Our field sports is planning for summer camps, um, including beach volleyball, soccer, basketball, flag football, track and field. Um, some of those will be contractually taught classes, but a majority of them will be um, staff run programs. And then again, participation and revenue continues to exceed fiscal year 19. So field sports is doing well, very well. The adult field sports program is also doing very well. Um, spring men's and co-rec softball leagues are um, full. They are more, um, have exceeded again, the participation from previous years. So we're at 24 teams, which is six men and 18 co-rec teams. Um, and we typically have a smaller um, season in the spring. And that's simply due to the fact that Monterey High School and Pony are also using the fields. So we um, limit our play to Saturday afternoons and Sundays. 
So that means we've got a smaller league in the spring. Uh, this was also the first time registration was offered completely online with our new Amelia Smart Rec system. It has never been done before in Rec Track. Um, this was the first time. So it did streamline the process immensely. It also led to um, increased revenue since we were um, had to basically make sure we had the correct resident, non-resident. It really helped us capture who was a resident team and who was a non-resident team. So we did see a boost in revenue and we anticipate seeing that same boost with the bigger summer and fall leagues. Um, what's next is our summer men's and co-rec softball league, and then we'll run into 30 and over baseball at the end of this, um, beginning end of August. Um, one thing that we have, and you might notice is it's considered, it's called co-rec. Um, before it used to be co-ed, we're definitely leading the pack um, in California with, and basically we're all gender, uh, an all gender league. Um, so that's something that other cities are starting to um, tackle. And we're definitely, um, we found out when we went to see Paris last week, letting, uh, leading the field and trying to develop the correct rules and language and all of those things that we need to make sure we're inclusive of everyone. So El Estero Park Center is um, still doing extremely well. Gymnastics and preschool are full with wait lists. We have very strong enrollment in our dance, fencing, and chess programs. We're expanding our programs right now with more dance and arts classes um, and actually adding a uh, dance camp this summer. Smart Rec implementation and summer programming is also still an ongoing process as we bring new activities online. We need to figure out how to put them into the system. How do we do camperships and scholarships and Smart Rec and those type of things. Um, and we um, proposed with the fiscal year budget for uh, expanding gymnastics programs because those programs are full with wait lists. So there is the, definitely the demand. We just need um, an extra staff person. Hilltop is also doing extremely well. Um, it's still open pretty much on a program schedule basis um, due to staffing and Program enrollment is full for piano lessons, adult ceramics, monthly blood drives, among other things. And then our other classes are also doing extremely well. Um, what's next for Hilltop is Tiny Tot Summer Camp. And also we proposed for fiscal year 24 to add more ceramics classes because the classes are full with wait lists. They're extremely popular. So, And then Schultze is very busy. Um, they've, we have not just our programs that we offer, watercolor, drawing and painting, Tai Chi, all of those, but we also are a site for the Lions on Aging, uh, MST and AARP. So they're offering the driving classes. Um, they're helping us with senior taxi vouchers. Alliance on Aging right now is very busy with um, senior tax prep where seniors can get assistance, um, basically have someone do their taxes for them, um, which is not an easy thing. And then we um, have our senior walk-up produce distribution with a food bank, um, and we serve 636 people for um, just the month of February and March. And then our Meals on Wheels program um, is actually growing. Um, we have 685 people that we served February and March. We thought that was a program that was gonna go away due to the ending of the COVID-19 emergency and state funding being switched over. But luckily enough that, um, didn't happen. And so now we are the only drive up pickup site um, on uh, that Meals on Wheels offers. And because of that, we're seeing increased enrollment. Um, so then we, again, we're just working on expanding our programs each month. And we did propose um, as part of the budget to bring back some popular programs, um, social events, um, programs for special, uh, special needs adults, and um, rolling out the Monterey travel program again with probably four trips per year, just kind of slowly bringing those back um, and doing things that I know some of the seniors really want, like travel to San Francisco for holiday shopping, maybe um, a trip to a casino, something like that, just slowly rolling it out. Cause we used to do probably 18 trips a year. Um, so we just staff capacity and, you know, just to get the interest level we're rolling that out slowly for next fiscal year. 
so what's next? We are in the middle of all kinds of things. This is not enough to explain how busy we are at the moment. We are planning for the 4th of July, um, which will be again on Colton Hall lawn. And we've got the music picked out and we've got food trucks and nonprofit food vendors. Uh, we're already planning for Halloween, the trunk and treat. So we'd love for PRC to have a trunk if they would be interested. <laughs> um, but we're really um, trying to get ahead of ourselves because things just, we just have to keep, we just have very limited staff. So we've got to plan so far in advance. We are very full, uh, very busy in the process of recruiting part-time staff for summer programs. We also are in the process of recruiting one full-time staff person. Uh, we in, opened it up internally, so we have one candidate we will in, interview and then see how that goes. And if necessary, we'll open it up to um, an open, full open recruitment. Um, we again are looking at expanding our program offerings based on our staff capacity and budget. So ceramics, gymnastics, things like that. We're also proposing as part of the budget to um, start adding programs to the Casa Novo Oknol neighborhood, but also the Via Del Monte and Laguna Grande neighborhoods, which have been notoriously underserved. Uh, they kind of uh, are an island in some ways. They um, People in the Casanova Oak Knoll neighborhood don't want to cross over Fremont and vice versa. Um, and we know that the, especially the Via Del Monte neighborhood is a community that is also CDBG eligible. So we're going to try and get some programs out there. Uh, maybe a Saturday with Santa and pancakes in conjunction with the Monterey Fire Department. Um, maybe something with Monterey uh, Union FC. Um, but we've got lots of ideas and we're slowly, we're just, looking at more of um, pop-up events and things that we can offer to both neighborhoods um, without fully um, staffing a building um, full-time. Uh, we just really have very limited staff. And as I've mentioned before, we're operating three community centers, but also 11 outdoor programming sites at the peak of our um, programming. So um, with seven staff people full-time and a bunch of part-timers adding another a fully open community center or something like that is probably beyond our abilities at this time. Um, so we're also, again, fine tuning smart rec, which we're not hearing complaints from the community about smart rec. We're just seeing that they're enrolling. So that is, in my opinion, things are going well. Um, I'd love for people to be singing its praises and how easy it is and how wonderful it is. We're not getting that, but we're also not getting the complaints. So we're very happy with that. And then you probably will see, or if you haven't already, that we're marketing and planning for our summer. So you'll see some of our print ads and the Herald and the Pinecone and the Weekly um, and potentially some um, TV spots eventually, but we're really working on getting the word out about not just our recruitment, but our summer programs. Um, and hopefully bringing back, because we've lost, we did have traditional summer camps last summer, but we did lose two years of you know, people remembering Whispering Pines Day Camp. It's our 65th summer, uh, Camp Kinsabi, 70 years. Like we're getting, we have to get back out there and the new people who have moved into Monterey and the peninsula may not have heard of us. So we really need to get out there. And then again, we're wrapping up the budget. Um, it's actually in the hands of our finance department and city manager. Um, there'll be a budget study session at the end of this month. Um, in case anyone, anyone wants to tune in. Um, and I think we can send you more information about that, but that's kind of what's happening right now. Sure. Oh, wait, one sec. Karen's gonna jump in. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce Loria Tade. She is our fitness supervisor and she is standing in for Andrea Willard tonight. So thank you, Lori, and welcome. Thank you, Karen. I'm not used to, I have a microphone, but usually not this way. Um, okay, Andrea's on vacation, much needed break from everything that's going on. So Sports Center for February and March, we have been extremely busy. And as you can see with our numbers, we have um, increasing slowly, but surely seems like it's been a lot in the last couple months. Um, over 5,000 in February, almost 6,000 in March. And then over 5,000 drop-in passes with the weekly attendance at, at 7,000. So that means the attendance is up by about 25% from last year at this time. 
personal training. February and March, um, I don't know if you remember from last presentation, but we had a January promotion and we sold $42,000 worth of uh, personal training sessions. So this month, 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 this month in particular, um, a lot of sessions were used. So the trainers were extreme, have been extremely busy the last couple months. So we, the, they, 563 sessions were used and then 235 sessions were sold with a revenue of almost $10,000, which is actually pretty good considering how many packages we sold in January. So we're starting to see people purchase again. Group exercise, it's been very, very busy in pretty much every class that we offer. We offer over 60 classes per week now. Um, before COVID, we were over 100, so we're slowly but surely creeping back up there. Um, overall, the participants, 12, over 12,000 12, class participants with the average class side of, size of 26, which is um, actually higher than it was before COVID, although there's less classes. So participation's up 42% from last, last February, March. We just started um, the semi-private rowing clinic with um, one of our personal trainers, uh, Leo Pedrosa is a former Olympic rower from Argentina. Um, he moved into the area recently and we decided we don't have a lot of rowing machines, but there's a ton of interest in rowing. Um, it's very it's very trendy right now. So we decided to offer the semi-private rowing clinic. We did our first session in March, second session in April, and it's been very well received. So we're really happy that we're able to offer a new program. Monterey Sports Center drop-in activities. So this is um, the gymnasium programming that Ryan Nunez oversees. Um, we got a lot of great drop-in opportunities, um, volleyball, always very popular Wednesday nights, over 40 in attendance. Uh, futsal, he's, I think he started that, I don't know if it was February or March, it must've started in, I thought it started in March, but just brought that back and he's getting about 15. Um, badminton, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, and they would like to have badminton all day long if they could. So the, the it's, it's a strange time, but it's really all we can fit in with the programming because the gymnasium has been so busy. Um, pickleball Tuesday, Thursday, eight to 11. Generally that gets very busy when it's raining. Um, so the overall average is not great on really nice sunny days because they want to play outside. But when we had the rains, we they were coming in in droves. So that was great to see. Monterey Sports Center swim lessons. So Tony Graffinino um, oversees this area and last couple of months, 395 group lessons, um, over 1400 private swim lessons, which are very time consuming to um, schedule. So that's, that's great. And they bring in a lot of additional revenue. Facility rentals seems like there's more than this, but <laughs> the birthday parties take over the sports center on the weekend. So they are only available on Saturdays and Sundays. So I think we were booked every weekend. Um, and sometimes it's not just a pool rental, but we'll have two going on, one in the gymnasium and one in the pool area. And we have a party tent for the pool area and we use the former kids zone for a party room. So we, um, and as you can imagine, birthday parties are, are, are crazy. So 16 birthday parties, 167 lane rentals. And that's generally to, um, I think a lot of scuba, they like to rent the lanes and do their practicing. Um, and I believe some swim clubs as well. Monterey Sports Center sports camp. So we had two weeks of sports camp in March. Um, fantastic attendance. Um, we were full with waiting lists on both weeks, over 100 participants. There was always a wait list. The counselor and training was our, uh, used to be called teen work experience. We've re rebranded that to a counselor and training because really it's about having these kids get the exposure and, and, and um, working with the kids, mentoring these younger kids, and then hopefully will want to work as a sports camp counselor. So there was 14 participants um, in the last, in those last, in those two weeks of sports camp. And Monterey Sports Center Martial Arts and Wrestling. So Martial Arts is a program that's been around since the beginning and Scott Merrill is in the picture and he's been, he's a fantastic um, instructor and his, his, his program is always full. Um, Beginner and inter intermediate, he's got two sessions now. So he's got the beginner intermediate and that's a lot of 
and it's both youth and adults, and then 13 in the advanced class. Um, but that's been a program that's been really, really um, um, successful for the sports center. I used to I used to oversee it, so that's why I know so much about it. Um, wrestling, he had this is the first time I believe he's had a full with a waiting list um, for the wrestling program. So that was fantastic to see. And uh, Robert, Robert, Roberto uh, Dixon was is the wrestling um, coach, and he's been around for a long time, and he's he's um, an excellent coach as well. Sports Center completed projects. Studio two windows were completed, hallelujah, that was great to see. I think everyone is thrilled to be back in the studio. Windows look great, a lot of air, um, ventilation's nice to have. We weren't able to open a lot of the windows prior to this, and this is the cycling studio now, and it it, it got very warm in there. So I was, we were all very happy to have that done. And then the pool doors as well in the pool area. Um, Karen, how many doors were replaced? The, I think six doors, correct? uh at least that yeah so we had all the doors along the side of the pool that faces like the turnaround the roundabout in the driveway and then the doors that also go out onto the sun deck so we're also um, advocating for replacing the other doors that face del Monte. i'd really like to have all the doors from the same manufacturer on the same warranty at the same age um, so uh, we're working out to see if we can get the budget. Um, we have a grant that will pay for it. I just need to make sure that there's enough of the grant money left to do those last doors. And my goal would be to have those installed and ready um, before we paint the exterior of the building so they can have new paint on the outside as well. Uh, we've been transitioning the color scheme on in the inside. I don't know if you noticed, but some of the purple we're giving away more and more to black to have a little more get away from the 90s feel and get a little more modern. Uh, so we've gone more with the black color scheme on the inside. Um, on the outside, we'll be retaining that same coastal feel with the existing colors on the outside, but just with a fresh coat of paint. Oh, I'm sorry, I may have stole some of your thunder. Oh, no, okay. I want you kind of were, you told me about that project. I wanted you to have a little something in there. Okay, the sports center uh, fiscal 23, the budgeted uh, revenue, you will see um, 2.5, blah, 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 but you can see the numbers and I want to read them off to you. So year to date revenue, we're doing really well. Um, and they, the amended project projected revenue, we should be um, able to um, exceed that by almost $260,000. And what is next? We have the exterior painting that I think is gonna start fairly soon. Um, so the whole building will get a fresh coat of paint. Um, the corbels, if you look in the front of the sports center, there was these wooden um, corbels that kind of what overlaid the windows. Um, those are gonna be replaced because I think they were rotted, I believe. Um, and I don't know if they're gonna be replaced with metal or, or wood, so. I don't know if you want to expand on that, but anyway, that's going to be replaced. Yeah, I think they're going to be replaced so they match the existing yeah. ones that are there now. And then what's next for us? Um, we are in the process of planning for summer programming, um, trying to recruit part-time staff for um, the sports um, lifeguards, sports camp counselors, front desk attendants, um, just front, trying to get part-time staff hired and trained before the very busy summer. Um, we're one building and sports camp feels like it for six or eight weeks that we have it, it's just like we're, we've got kids everywhere. So it's it's great, um, but it's definitely takes its toll on our members. Um, so we really try to keep it, uh, they keep them in their places because um, members like to, you know, still use the pool. It, there's always like this constant little battle, but. I'm glad that the kids have a, a sports camp to come to. Um, youth volleyball and basketball clinics. Ryan is going to try to program some of those in the summertime. We've got the PE for the homeschool um, group that's doing very well. Developing the fiscal 20 or uh, 24 budget. Um, and then the, the sports facility is going to be doing their council presentation on May 24th. And we'll continue with facility improvements.
We'll just let Nate, I think, is next to open it up for any public comment. Um, and Thank then commissioners questions. Public comments, Nate. Can you hear us? Nate? Yes, yeah, sorry, Matt, Madam Chair, a lot, a lot of clicking I have to do here. So thank you for your patience. Um, so thank you for joining us for tonight's City of Monterey Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. If you are not joining us in person, there are two ways to virtually participate in this meeting. You may join the meeting directly on Zoom.gov using the Zoom app. To join the meeting on Zoom on your computer, smartphone, or telephone, use the link or phone number on the agenda at isearchmonterey.org. Since the meeting has started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. You can also call into the meeting by dialing toll free 833-568-8864. Then enter meeting ID 160-922-2935 pound. And if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound again. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at monterey.org slash public meetings. To make a public comment using the Zoom app, you can virtually raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button on the bottom of your screen. If you dialed in by phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine, and then to unmute yourself when called upon by dialing star six, you must do both. Public commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. Please stay within the time limit that has been established for today's meeting, which will be shown using a countdown timer on the screen. If you are connected live on Zoom, the timer is accurate with no delay. Today's meeting is also streamed live on the city's YouTube account, which is accessible at youtube.com slash city of Monterey with a 10 second delay and on Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. As always, we look forward to receiving your public comment. And again, this will be public comment in regard to the presentation. So if you do have um, anyone in the chamber that would like to make a public comment, please approach the podium. Is there anyone here who wants to make a public comment regarding the presentation? Thank you. Nate, do you have anyone on the line? We have no one online that would like to make a public comment on this item. Okay, so if there are no more public comments, we're now closed public comments on this item. So the next thing we're going to do is um, call to approve the minutes from the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting in February, which was the 8th. Are there any questions or comments? Chair McEwen, I think uh, we can do commissioner comments too on the presentation, ah. if anybody has anything. Okay, are there any questions or comments from the commissioners? I have a question. Uh, specifically about the full-time position that looks like could possibly get in-house. If that is moved, is are you gonna have another uh, open position for a full-time position? Are we moving possibly somebody that already is full-time to another full different? Oh, okay, cool. It would be uh, open recruitment for another someone from Great. the outside to apply. Okay. Yeah, we don't have anyone to move. <laughs> We're too short-staffed, yeah. So the, the May 24th meeting, is that city with the city council, the report from the, okay. So will we get anything in advance of the presentation? Thank you, okay. Is this this meeting that was scheduled for earlier and then, re okay, this, I think this is probably an important meeting and uh, I'm gonna try and be there. Thank you. And I guess the only other thing is you guys are doing great. I mean, you can't keep up. That's when you have wait lists, that's a good sign. Thank you, Commissioner Gibson. I just wanted to elaborate that you'll, it'll be the advance notice you'll get of the meeting will be similar to like what you get here where you'll get the report and the, the agenda a few days ahead of time. So it'll be similar. Thanks. I just had a couple of questions. Um, Schultze Park, any plans for reinstituting the sit-down luncheons there? 
That is actually one of the, the programs we're proposing to bring back. We're not sure it's going to be a hundred people in one room, but yes, we're planning on bringing something back. There's, we bring, there's a grant, um, not grant money, but there's a, a donation account that contributes to that. Um, so we are looking to bring that back. Yeah. Second question, just um, on the old capital site, it, just so I understand what the next step in the process is, when you are hiring essentially a consultant or whatever to look at it, is that to decide what to do with that area? Is that the fundamental question or is that already decided and it's how to do it? No, it, it's to decide what to do that with that area to take public input, come up with a plan, um, just a smaller version of the parks and rec master plan. And then something that we can move forward with an implementation. Hopefully if we have it now, we have a vision um, that is staff and community led. And then how do we implement that? I had a question along that line. Um, I think I heard that NCIP had um, uh, given $75,000 towards that. Is that just towards the plan? So that's the consultancy and- And the public outreach and developing the plan. And then there is a lot of environmental involved in that. Um, so it's potentially bringing in a biologist, ecologist to help us figure out what we can and cannot do. Yeah. So it sounds like there won't be a lot left over after that 75,000 to implement towards any action plan or any action. Probably not. Um, we know that there's potentially some money available from, um, I think, I, I want to say maybe the Coastal Commission has some money in there, but it's been designated to kind of add campgrounds, low cost, low amenity campgrounds. If that's something we decide, there's potentially some funds there. Otherwise, we'd be looking at either NCIP or some grant funding or something. Thank you. Any further comments or questions with the commissioners? Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to shortchange us, but um, all right, now we will move on to approval of the minutes. Um, are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes? All right, would someone like to make a motion? I'll go ahead and make a motion that Past the minutes. Thanks. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that was unanimous. Okay. Any opposed? No. All right. We're good. All right. So we are now to the public comment portion, which are public comments that are not on items on the agenda. Um, it, Nate, it looks like we have um, a um, person who would like to make a comment here. So we'll start there and then we'll see if you have anyone, okay? Yes, Hi. anyone who would like to make a public comment in the chamber, please approach the podium. There is a three minute time rule. And if you could let us know your name, that would be lovely. I'm Jean Rash. Um, I just want to say hello that I'm here in the capacity of vice chair of the NCIP for your discussion tonight. The chair, Rick Hewer, is traveling in South America and can't be here, of course, in person, but not even remotely. God only knows where he is. And um, so uh, Tom and I will link back to the NCIP for um, items that you talk about tonight. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your being here tonight. Um, anyone further from the chambers? Okay. Nate, do you have anyone there who would like to speak? Again, if anyone online would like to make a general public comment, please raise your hand or press star nine. We have no general public comment. All right, public comments are now closed. So the next item is to review and prioritize parks and recreation related nominated um, and uh, NCIP programs. 
for fiscal year 2023-24. And I think, Shannon, you're going to guide us through this? With some assistance, yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> So just some discussion, um, what we have in front of us tonight, there's a couple of different things that we're asking Parks and Rec to do, um, commission to do. Um, we do have an attachment with about, um, let me see how many, uh, 50, 54 projects or something like that that are parks and recreation related. We're not gonna go through all of those um, unless you have any specific questions about them. Um, what this is, so there's 103, 103 projects total nominated for NCIP review this year. Those are some that have been renominated because they were defunded or things like that. So they've been thrown back into the mix. And then there are 55 parks and rec re recreation related projects, which is um, attachment one in your agenda. Um, Tonight, though, what we're asking is for the Parks and Recreation Commission to review projects that um, have been submitted by you or that we feel like you guys should consider um, and rank those projects so that when it comes to NCIP advocacy nights, um, the part, someone from the commission can speak to those projects and advocate for them. Um, and then... So what we're doing is for you to asking for you to rank those projects, also nominate one or two or three commissioners to attend those meetings. Um, and then after NCIP voting night, um, which will be, I can't remember exactly, will will you the projects will come back that have been approved for Parks and Rec Commission review, um, make sure they are consistent with the Parks and Rec master plan, that there's no additional concerns. Um, and then they will, from there, go to city council for final approval. Um, so tonight, it's just to review projects that were nominated. Um, if you can throw things into the mix, if you want, the ones that have been suggested are just ones that we are recommending. Um, and the reason we're recommending them is they might have been submitted in 2020 or previously, but we also want to focus on projects that are in our Parks and Rec Master Plan that really kind of address areas that um, need improvements. Um, you know, they've been cited in the master plan as needing help. Um, and so we're kind of, I don't think we actually have anything in here that is considered a new project. Um, it's really uh, addressing issue um, areas of our parks and our facilities that need um, improvements. So um, we can go ahead and get started with the presentation just to give you guys a little bit more familiarity with the projects. You have seen them before. Again, those that's the breakdown of our neighborhoods um, for the NCIP. And then the first project um, that we're bringing to you tonight is the Ellis Darrow Park Park Course Improvement. Um, that is probably... Um, 25, 30 plus years old and does need to be upgraded. We are hearing from community members that they like this amenity. Um, it's really kind of um, body functional exercises. It's not necessarily uh, geared towards um, seniors, but it's, you know, and, and at the central location, it's like a community wide um, benefit. You know, there's three park courses around the edge of the Lake El Estero but it is time to upgrade those facili that facility. The next one is the Ellis Darrow Park Center face facility improvements. And this is really an interior facelift of the community center. Um, we did input in for some other funding potentially from CIP. Um, but as you know, we've, we focused our programming on Ellis Darrow, Schultze and Hilltop because they have um, multiple rooms and we can offer more programs at one time. And um, if you've been in our centers recently, you can see that some of them are very well loved. Um, we've done very little improvements to them over the years. So this is really looking at, you know, replacing the light fixtures, painting, um, flooring, um, you know, things that will extend the life of the building because we know that the city also has limited funds and there are other priorities. Um, they, we need a new fire station, we need a new library, 
what can we do to extend the life of our centers so that they are still very useful to us and the public um, and also attractive. I think that's the main thing as well. Um, people want to come into an area that feels like it's well-maintained and fresh and clean. Um, so that's what we're looking for with this, for this project. The next one is the Elistero Park barbecue area shade structure. And this is the area behind the Solicito ballpark. It is our largest ball um, bar picnic barbecue area. It can has a capacity of 200 people. Um, Whispering Pines is 75 and all of our other parks are 50 or less. Um, and so with that area being right behind the ballpark, it does have fl balls flying over um, the field uh, outside the fence line, but also um, it does get a lot of sun. It's on the lake edge and it would just be a nice amenity to have for people um, who are usually large groups wanting to gather. Um, and it would be something appropriate to that location. So probably a little bit different than our other structures that maybe with Spring Pines or Oak Newton. Um, the next one is the play structure inside the, um, that's dedicated to Elistero Park Center for our preschool programs and our camps. That is a little bit of a bigger project. It is our oldest piece of play equipment in the city. It has not been touched because the project itself is a little bit more involved due to the swimming pool underneath. Um, so that's one reason it hasn't been touched, but it definitely needs um, some love. Then the next one is our Jack's Park infield turf, artificial turf installation. So what we're proposing is very similar to what started at Solicito is keeping, as doing the infield. Um, that if alone would allow for more playable days. Um, when it's been raining immensely, that's the reason we're closing Jack's is because of the infield. It really tends to puddle and flood. If we were to have an artificial turf infield, um, that would definitely allow them to keep playing. Um, we're still proposing to keep a natural grass outfield, but just um, upgrade the infield. And then um, Solicito Ballpark, you've seen this one again before, it's to upgrade the lighting um, with more energy efficient lighting, but also lighting that is directed um, more appropriately onto the field. The current lighting does not is not sufficient enough for the level of play on that field. Um, there's dark spots when lights go out. It um, is a large process for parks to bring someone out and replace them. Um, and then also right now with the current technology, we have to send a staff person out there to turn them on and turn them off. Um, new technology would allow us to do that all remotely. Um, so we'd also be, the lights would be more focused on the field with less backwash. We're not really hearing complaints for the neighborhood, but any any extra lighting off of that field, I'm sure would be um, appreciated by everyone, so. Then this one again is a project you guys are familiar with, and that's a recreational trail use study to determine what can we do? What, who's using the recreation trail? How are they using it? What can we do to address pinch points? Um, and then from there, move forward with the plan. And then this one is the Via Paraiso Park basketball court upgrade. It definitely needs um, some assistance there as well. Um, it would be involved removing and the um, kind of that like wall ball area and extending the basketball court. It wouldn't be a full regulation size basketball court, but um, something um, fairly decent size, probably about the size of Montecito Park. Um, it is the only um, basketball court in that neighborhood and that side of town. Um, so it would be a, a benefit to get that fixed um, at Monterey Vista. And then Hilltop Park Center facility improvements. Um, again, this is um, another project very similar to El Estero. Um, we're looking at basically extending the life of that facility. Not much was done to it when it opened in mid, the mid eighties. Um, it was just enough to get it um, open as a community center. But if you tour the building, it still looks very much like a classroom. 
Um, and it also has, you know, yellowing lights and fixtures and um, different things. So it's really an, a facelift improvement um, because it's so widely utilized um, and would just extend the life of that facility because we, there is another NCIP project on that list, which is a full study and redesign. And we definitely are supportive of that, but we're also aware that a full study redesign, um, re rebuilding is millions and millions of dollars. And this is much less than that. Um, and, you know, um, we've done this to ourselves before. We've had studies and redesigns. Um, one for El Elistero, there's probably been several and they've not been implemented. So now they're outdated. So, well, I, if the city had the ability to completely redesign Hilltop, that would be wonderful. Um, but we're also kind of aware of the, the city's whole needs for everything. And so this is just things that can extend the life of the building, new electrical fixtures, window treatments, you know, um, fixtures that allow us to use the spaces in multiple ways, um, tables, chairs, um, different items, painting, lighting. Um, right now, everything looks very yellow and you know, isn't super inviting. So um, that's what we're looking for, for both Hilltop and El Estero. And then Schultze Park, we toured that back in, I think it was August. Um, it was part of our park tour and we um, are proposing a exterior redesign and then implementation of improvements, um, really making that like an outdoor um, space, a garden, an event space, a programming space something similar in my mind to Friendly Plaza because it's very fitting with the structure of the building and that area. Um, so that is the proposal is to look at potentially phase one, what would be the design and then phase two, an actual renovation. And that is it. So that is the 10 projects that we have listed um, in your agenda report. We've also included an attachment of a ranking sheet um, where you can vote on them, but I know we need to do public comment um, and all of that and commissioner questions, <laughs> but um, does anyone have any questions right now before we open it up to public comment about anything that was just presented? Commissioners? Yes. I have a question on the... Um, um, shade structure mm -hmm. can you tell me how many groups on an annual basis use that barbecue area um i've i couldn't tell you there are people who book in advance and then there are people who just show up show up so i really couldn't say um i think we would get more people if we were to have that amenity because we do feel like we have to warn them like oh but if you use it this day just be aware there's a professional baseball league playing at the same time you know mm -hmm. so we um, we do get rentals and it also is used um, every Saturday and Sunday by groups that are serving the homeless meals. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. And um, the um, parkour, yeah. <clears throat> I've never seen anyone use it. Is that because it's older and not really user friendly? Uh, potentially, I mean, I, I've definitely seen people using it. Um, yeah, but it's it's definitely geared towards, um, you know, maybe Lori could could tell us a little bit more about functional body weight exercises. But you, it's definitely um, it's definitely used. It's just um, we do hear from people that um, it's not really in the best condition. I see. Okay, thank you. Forgive my ignorance if this is ignorant, but. You're referring to the Par Hilltop Park Center and El Estero Park Center. Those are different than our community centers, correct? Park Center, are those interchangeable? Because you said we have three community centers that are currently, right? Yeah, those they're they're interchangeable. Okay, like community center, or neighborhood center. I mean, I really think that we what we have is really traditional neighborhood centers but we're using a neighborhood center to serve the entire community and even Pacific Grove and Marina and Seaside. Um, so, but they're really not what you'd think of a, tr a traditional community center where it's master planned and it's designed to serve every need of that entire community. It's really a neighborhood center that we're over utilizing. Right, yeah. So two of the three that you mentioned that are, op that are open 
um, are on this list. Yeah. What would be the third one? Schultz. Schultz. Okay. But um, if you, we also toured Schultz in August um, and Schultz has been very well maintained over the years and expanded. And I, I think that's probably one of our best facilities in condition. So. And, and then the, the asterisk CDBG eligible, what's that? Potentially community development block grant eligible okay. um, that maybe there would be some matching funds or something where we're going to have to work with planning on that to determine for sure. But yeah. Okay, thanks. And I guess I just have one question. You were spending money, we're asking for money on interior facelifts. Is the envelope of the building still good, in good shape, like the roof and um I mean <laughs> there it, the hilltop project does include potentially looking at the roof and the sewer line um but we also submitted those for CIP okay. um but the exteriors are you know fairly good okay. yeah hey, I have a question um these are all such worthy projects it's really going to be difficult to rank them um are there any that are like really big ticket items. I'm thinking the artificial turf is probably our most expensive one. I would say, art Louis nodding over here, artificial okay. turf infield would be um, probably expensive project. I think Solicito was 500. Probably less than that. What, for the turf? The infield. Yeah, be, that'd be a million dollars for the infield, sure. Oof. Yeah, we're also dealing with inflationary prices right now as well. So everything yeah. is more expensive. Um, yeah, and then Dom can definitely speak to that. But um, that would be an expensive project. Um, we haven't priced everything, but um, the, um, for instance, the play equipment upgrade at El Estero could also be a little pricey because of the um, swimming pool that we need to be done uh, addressed under that um, we kind of priced the El Estero facility improvements right around 250,000 um, the hilltop facility improvements just with a rough quote from one contractor for each individual aspect was probably around 400,000 if we throw in the roof and the sewer line we're looking at you know maybe 750 mm -hmm. for everything at hilltop um, Louis are there any other Probably what's the lighting? Probably three hundred thousand. Okay. The the order in which they're presented to us is there? No, they're actually just by neighborhood. They're listed by neighborhood in order, or or multi. There's one multi neighbor neighborhood in there, which is the rec tail study. I think there's, you told me this before, but changing the lighting would also significantly decrease the cost of the lighting correct it would save on electrical i'm not sure what the true savings would be but it would also save on staff time mm -hmm. yeah. yeah commissioners any further questions or comments the, the hilltop is that so that's just like lights and paint inside is is that going to be part of the kitchen too or is it mostly just the a little bit in the kitchen, but we're looking what Hilltop is, is why it's a little bit so expensive. It's the entire upper level. Um, so all of the lighting and the electrical and window treatments and painting. And then there's um, both of those centers are about the same when it comes to painting because Hilltop is so big. That's why painting is so expensive. But um, El Estero has so much um, trim work involved. And so that's why it's expensive. But we're also addressing some maintenance issues where and we might have put latex over oil and now we've got to fix those things so um, yeah and the the, the plate structure at El Estero what is where the pool was is it is it concreted in now or is that part of finishing it there was a plate structure the pool was filled in with I believe sand and then oh. a concrete Pad, and now there's rubber surface over that and then a, a play structure there okay but it's old it's probably yeah. 20 i remember the pool old. yeah just a um just a quick comment on the recreation trail study because i submitted that one a long time ago but anyway the point the real point of that is um and, and i think most people are, are aware of this if you just walk on that trail primarily between fisherman's wharf and the coast guard pier We've got an issue, and especially with 
electric bikes now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I look at it because I, I put on my lawyer's hat. I look on it as a liability issue. We just need to look at it. It, it doesn't mean, I don't know what can be done there, if anything, um, but taking a hard look at that would be helpful uh, to the city just in terms of analyzing what its options are and would be a good step in the right direction. So that's all I've got to say about that one. All right. Any further commissioner comments or questions? Well, then we'll open it up to public comments. Is there anyone here in chambers who would like to comment? Gene I'm sorry, Jean Rash. I just have a quick question, I guess, for Shannon and educate me. Um, why does the artificial turf uh, make less pooling of rainwater so that it can be more utilized? Uh, it just it helps with the drainage, and it's also not making mud. With there is clay right now, and um, so we we Ellis. Solicito, when we did the infield and the outfield, we can basically be on Solicito almost 365 days of the year um, because of the proper drainage and all of that. It doesn't puddle or um, anything like that. But um, with Jax, it's one of the first, Jax and Fronte are one of the first fields that we end up closing in, with any kind of rain or anything. It just Any further comments in the chamber? Uh, Nate, do you have anyone on the line who, or anyone online who is interested in a, making a comment? Madam Chair, yes, we have one uh, person that would like to speak. Uh, Mr. Sovereign, go ahead and unmute yourself. Good evening, commissioners. My name is John Sovereign. I'm a resident of Monterey. And I'm a pickleball player. Um, there is a, a project um, submitted uh, in the NCIP program to build a um, set of pickleball courts at Ryan Ranch. Uh, you may be familiar with this. Um, this project was submitted uh, previously before COVID and didn't um, receive the necessary votes at NCIP last year. Um, but it did receive your support um, and I thank you for that and I'm uh, speaking tonight hoping that uh, you'll continue to support this project at Ryan Ranch to bring additional pickleball uh, playing capacity to the city of Monterey. Um, as, as you may remember, um, the city of Monterey actually reduced the number of pickleball courts available for play, uh, public play. Uh, when we agreed uh, to reduce the footprint at, at uh, Via Paraiso Park last year. I was a member of that uh, mediation, and I believe that was a difficult compromise, but um, we, we are looking for, you know, more playing uh, surfaces, and uh, we would appreciate the, the city's support for that. We have started discussions with the city about cost sharing options and other um, possibilities that would make this a more appealing program project uh, and uh, hope that uh, you'll add this RR02, the Ryan Ranch 02 project to your list of priorities for this year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and your good comments. Nate, is there anyone else? Madam Chair, we have no other um, public comments. Okay. Any further questions or discussion amongst the commissioners? All right, well, shall we vote then? I guess we vote one for our highest priority and 10, actually there's some blank lines we could write in. If you wanted to, add, um, so first, if you want to add anything in, what, then Parks, the commission should make that decision that they're gonna add something to the rankings. Um, that's why there's blanks. Um, and then 
each one of you would individually rank your priorities and then we will tally those and report back to you what are the priorities. Um, and then we also would like potentially you to pick a few commissioners to attend the advocacy nights on April, I believe it's April 27th and May 11th. It is in the agenda report, but um, it it doesn't matter. Yeah. So first, we individually and we total it. So if there's any projects, I guess first would be, do you want to add any projects onto that? And you would have to vote for that. I had a I have a question, yeah. and that is, um, and maybe Ms. Roush can help on this project MV12 which is the Via Paraiso pickleball court improvements. And it's, there's a description there uh, of the project. Is that the project as described that was a result of mediation that just did not get funded? No. Um, I consider it very close. It may not be word for word, the original project mm -hmm. um, or the, or the um, negotiated project. The intent is that it, that it, Communicate that intent. Okay. What was the yep. number again? That's MV12. It's number 27. Uh, it's MV12. So, and, and that I think is actually up for discussion with NCIP tomorrow and may actually be funded. Um, yeah, it's a cutoff project. So they submitted it just in case it didn't, we didn't have enough funds, but so that raises the question because I was going to propose we add it because it got so close last time. Um, but if we don't need to do that because it potentially may get funded, yeah. we don't need to do it. So some guidance would be helpful. So I think Tom or or Louis can both speak to that, but it, I think we're we're very close. Yes. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Tom Hardy. I'm the NCIP staff coordinator. I have some title. Um, thank you. And uh, tomorrow evening, um, well, take a step back. Last year, um, the project was to restripe one of the two tennis courts at Via Paraiso Park. Uh, this year, it was submitted last year. It was a cutoff project, so it almost had enough votes, but not quite. Council approved it. So it's ready to go. Um, tomorrow evening, the NCIP committee will review and discuss it and um, likely approve it. There is funding available to, to meet it. It's not a very expensive project overall. So we're expecting that it will be fun. Well, I'm expecting, we never know what happens, but I'm expecting that it will be approved tomorrow evening. Um, the committee loves to approve projects. So um, <laughs> hopefully that will happen. I would think tonight, if you wanted to play it safe, you could put it on the list. And then if it does get approved, we can just like redline it and bump everything else up also. Um, but the, the, I would hope in 24 hours, we'll know that that project has been funded. Does if that we, help? It, it helps, but if we add to the list, one through 10, does that kick something else off of the list it doesn't it just adds to it so it's we'd rank them one through 11 or one through yeah or, or 55 for that yeah, there we go <laughs> but you know depends how late you want to be here tonight right yes yeah. i'm gonna miss jeopardy <laughs> so so i i think if i heard correctly then we need to make a motion to to add a, an item so i would move that we add uh mv12 to to our list so that it gets ranked among the others um, tonight. I second. A third. <laughs> <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. The motion. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we have a pickleball court upgrade, whatever we want to call it. And then if there's nothing else to add, there is. There is. Okay. Where if it's that simple, then I'd like to make a motion to add RRO2. It's a, the other pickleball up in Ryan Ranch. That's Ryan Ranch. What number is that? RR02. What number? That is number 38. Ryan Ranch. Yeah. We had a caller, I think. We all want to. We do need to take a vote off. As well. 
R R I would suppose we make a vote to accept that on the list. Add that to the list. There a second? I'm good. I'll second. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed. The motion carries, I guess. Mm -hmm. I have to consult my attorney. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm retired. That means I don't know squat. So. Okay, so that was a five five. Yes. And then we vote tonight. If that doesn't pass tomorrow, can we? Are we going to vote again, or this is it? This is it. Okay. Okay. So we're all so, voting. Uh, is there just to make sure? Is there anything else we're going to add? And now it's a ranking of one to twelve. Well. Nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. So just a reminder to the vote: the highest priority gets a one, and your lowest priority will get a twelve. So it's ranking highest to lowest. And then, so if you guys want to take a few minutes to rank, and then we'll grab those sheets and like Sorry, let's use my mic next time. <laughs> And then when you're done, if you just raise your hand and we'll go around and pick. Sit down. Thanks. Yeah. We can take a short break <laughs> while we, yeah, we will. Yep. You will know what that is. We'll announce it. And then also the next thing would be to who of the PRC wants to advocate for these projects at um, the April 27th meeting. And I think it's May 11th. So you guys would need to have a discussion about that and a vote. You know what time the meeting is on the 27th? Six o'clock. Okay. And the other one is what day? It would be good. Yeah. So it's May twenty seventh and April twenty seventh and May eleventh. We'll be here, I believe, in council chambers or online. Yeah. Um, April twenty seventh and May eleventh. Really, I couldn't believe how quickly it was that. It was, yeah. It's a, that was very well made. That was my comment. You did a great job doing it. Hey, Ellen, you volunteer? I, I volunteer. Yeah. I'll be, yeah, I can, I'll be back. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, anyone else wanting to volunteer? I'm just going to be one of the ones. Okay. As well. Okay, Thanks. I think I think two is plenty. Thank you. It's April twenty seventh. I can do that. April twenty seventh, and do you want to do one, split it up, or each do two? I can. I believe I can do either one. I can do both. I was going to be there. Anyway. Me, me too. Have, okay. Thank you both for doing both. Uh, That'll be good. Okay. So do the minutes need to reflect our volunteering for NCIP advocacy or is make like official statement? 
we will do our best to advocate according to um, the wishes of our fellow commissioners. We appreciate you taking the time to do that because it does make a difference um, to the NTIP committee. They appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. So Chair McEwen, can you uh, reiterate what days who's going to the We're meeting? both going both days and I believe it's April 27 mm -hmm. and May 11. Okay, and you and Chair Gibson. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So while all this is being tabulated, should we do staff comments? Would that be reasonable? Um, no, so I Shannon's think we working. Should vote, then we should vote that you approve these rankings. Oh, very good, very good. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 know what to advocate for. Or else you're just out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really.
we're gonna i hope we're ready is everyone over there ready melissa drum roll just make sure we're okay <laughs> just making sure we're okay so okay so hopefully i've done my math we've done our math properly but the number one priority of parks and rec commission is the recreation trail study that got the lowest number of votes mm -hmm. and we can send out a, a finalized ranking too after this meeting but number two was the ellis Darrell park center facility improvements facelift number three was the hilltop facility improvements number four was solicitor ballpark lighting improvements number five is the Ellistero Park Center play equipment upgrade, followed by number six, which is the um, Ellistero barbecue shade structure. Seven is Jack's Park infield artificial turf installation. Eight is the pickleball court at Via Paraiso, which if it gets funded would potentially fall off the list. Number nine is the Schulte Park exterior improvements. Number 10 is the Via Paraiso Park basketball court upgrade. Number 11 is the Ellistero Park Park course improvements. And then number 12 is the Ryan Ranch pickleball court. Thank you. Thank you. So if there is a consensus and agreement that that is the priorities of the Parks and Rec Commission, we can have a motion and a second um, and then a vote or if we want to go back and revise anything. <laughs> and any discussion on revision? Do we move to, well, I'll move to accept the ranking as uh, as correlated, as computed there, that's the word, as computed by Shannon et al. I don't know where I'm going with this for our <laughs> um, NCIP projects. There we go. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, yeah. So we'll send out a nice, pretty updated ranking sheet for everyone. Thank you. Um, now that we've made our rankings and voted on it, um, we have recorded in the minutes uh, that Commissioner Gibson and I will be the NCIP advocates. Okay, good. All right, so now we move on to staff comments. Um, Karen, do you have some comments for us this evening? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, this team at this table, as well as their um, their teams beneath them, have did extension, extensive work the last couple of months on the budget. It doesn't always reflect in the slides and everything that goes on, but I'm, it was some heavy lifting uh, for them to do, and I just appreciate that all so much. And on top of their operations and special events that they shared with you, they also had storm response and as well as applying for and administering grants. So they're doing all of that. Um, and then especially uh, Louie and the sports center team have also been working on construction and other projects, which are also pretty labor intensive and require a lot of collaboration and coordination. So I just want to acknowledge their hard work for that. Um, I also wanted to give you some breaking news. If you hadn't read the Herald, uh, Dennis Amenis has been repaired. So where he was cut off at the foot, uh, we had a very generous um, donation of their time and expertise uh, to repair the statue. I know them as, as Stacy and Eric because I know them as long-term employees at the Monterey Sports Center when I was there. So um, we're hoping that they'll come back um, now that we've gotten through COVID and they've gotten their business off the ground. They've been amazing uh, group exercise instructors for us in the past. Um, Louis might be able to remember the exact title of their business. Don't 
specific metal work. So anyway, one, we'll make sure that we thank them some more. Oh, that's right. Uh, you were traveling around the world. Yeah, they found at the bottom of the lake near In-N-Out Burger. So um, he was found and he's been repaired. He's been reattached to his foot. His nose has been buffed out and they've worked on patina and some other things. So now we're working with the team to get new pedestals or stands for both the statues, one that was in front of the rec office, and then also the one that was in Dennis Menace Playground. And the one that was in Dennis Menace Playground will now be, once we get the new pedestal installed at El Estero Park Center indoors so that it will be safe um, oh. after hours. Uh, the other one, we're hoping to get a pedestal and then have in the sports center lobby. We've had art in the lobbies in the past, and so we would like to bring Dennis and Menace there inside again where he's safe, but also can be enjoyed by children and the public alike. And then we are working on a, another Dennis the Menace that will go actually in the playground that will not be constructed of valuable bronze or something that is uh, appealing to people who may want to steal him. So we're working on something that's um, a little more like what you would see at Universal Studios or Disneyland that is very interactive for children um, that they can touch and it could be uh, used to that. A lot of interaction from the public and not as valuable or attractive to thieves. So we'll be looking for funding for that. Um, we think we've found a company that would do a nice job, uh, but we're working on that funding and then getting all our dentists back in place. <laughs> um, other breaking news. Uh, I just want to interject the name of the, their company is Pacific Metal Craft. Thank you, Pacific Metal Craft, for their generous donation of their time and expertise to repair Dennis the Menace. Uh, the other exciting thing that we've been working on is expanding the hours at the Monterey Sports Center. And we had put in for the budget for that to be expanded um, in July. And our team has been advocating for actually starting those in June because we know people in the summer with longer days and the kids out of school that people really want to work out and be active later into the evening and especially on the weekends. And so we're hoping if everything goes through for sure, that should be starting July, uh, June 5th. So Monday, June 5th, we're hoping to have officially expanding the hours of the Monterey Sports Center. So we will keep you posted on that as well. And thank you to Loria Tate for being here this evening to fill in for Andrea. So thank you again to our tremendous team and to you as our commissioners for all your support. Thank you, Karen. Shannon? Sorry, it took a while to tabulate everything, but thank you everyone. Um, and I just wanna say thank you again to everyone, all of our team, you know, Sarah's here, Melissa's here and Nate's um, our voice from above, but we couldn't be able to run these meetings without everyone. Um, we actually were able to go to a California Parks and Rec Society conference just last week. Um, so we were able to send a few staff and uh, really learned a lot and got to, really kind of get some motivation and lots of ideas. And we're hoping we just have the capacity to implement some things um, and continue moving forward. But it's really just a huge effort. Everyone was working the bunny hop photo op. We had our bunny um, person, can't reveal, <laughs> but um, you know, it was just, it's a huge effort. It really revitalizes us when we actually get to be out and interact with the community. Um, and so we're just really, super busy planning for summer and all of our camps and hiring staff and working on promotion. Um, so we're hoping for a much better summer, lots of participation and everything. Um, so spread the word, please, and also encourage people to apply. Um, and then we're just going to keep moving straight ahead. And we're already thinking Halloween and all of other things. So we're very excited and hopefully we'll have a new staff person introduced to you guys very soon as well to add to our team. But we are a really great, we have great staff, everyone, Rachel, Misty, Brent, all, everyone is just working together and we're not just doing one thing where, you know, everyone was at the bunny hop working. Um, so it's just, it's a great feeling when we can all be together. But, so thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Louie? 
So I could say that I've been here 30 years. And so I don't think I've ever seen this much damage. Well, I'm sure I've never seen this much damage tree wise since uh, New Year's. Yeah, well, not 80, 85 before I was here, there was a lot of, it was a big storm. I remember I was out at Pebble Beach at that time. It was a lot of trees, but I don't think it was anything like this for the capacity of trees that were down. So since New Year's, we've had close to 200 trees go down between Monterey and the Presidio. Um, quite a few in the Presidio themselves, uh, but um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And um, I think our response time was good. We didn't have the streets closed for too long, a couple of house damage and uh, some property damage, but not as bad as it could have been. So I'm thankful for that. That's it, yeah. Thank you. Lori? I don't know how these comments usually go, but I have to thank my team at the Sports Center too. Andrea Willers, fantastic manager and our team works extremely hard, as you can see by all the programming we're doing. Um, Tony's got that that pool area dialed in, and we have some great part-time staff that are, are able to assist him to really manage that area because it's it can be a beast. Well, all the arms of the sports center seem to be that that way. <laughs> um, Ryan Nunez, the sports coordinator, he um, has really expanded the program as best he can, and he is it, it is him and part-time staff. So. Um, I highly commend for all the things he's trying. Um, he's trying new different things, trying to be creative and 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 really getting the whole community, the homeschool uh, PE program is something that we're hoping will continue to grow. Um, Jessica Sanchez is our uh, administrator and if we really rely on her to help us with all the, the red tape we have to get through to get things done. Um, we have Andrea Diallo, who manages that front desk, and I'm sure you know that she, she um, implemented Amelia, and it, <clears throat> it was a really, excuse me, <clears throat> huge task for her. So she um, continues to work hard to try to streamline um, Smart Rack Amelia and make it easier for our guests to um, manage. So she's puts in a lot of hours doing that. It's a lot of little detail tweaking because the program is really for more recreational programs and we're a little different with the fitness components. So um, I have to thank, is there anyone else? I'm forgetting my part-timers, um, Marcia DiMacurio, who um, assists me with personal training and um, the group exercise piece. I would not be able to manage the personal training component. It's a huge, um, it's, it's gone gangbusters. Um, so if I didn't have her, I don't know how I would, how I would manage that, the calling and the scheduling and all that fun stuff that we do. And then of course, uh, Leslie Pressman, who is the second arm for Dre at the front desk. I think if we didn't have her really helping us and helping train some of these, um, she's part-time, but training, she's been with the sports center for a long time and really knows how to maneuver the guests in the facility and how to really train people. So I just have to give a big thank you to everyone who works hard down there. Thank you, Lori. Um, I would just like to say, and I'm sure I speak for everyone here, is we're astounded and want to thank you. You're just the most amazing um, Parks and Rec um, group of people that I just am so thankful every time I come here. And it always makes me feel better about our city and about life in general to hear of all these wonderful programs. So, so thanks for me. Um, and I'm sure other people have comments too. Lou, you mentioned how many trees uh, over your 30 years. Um, I think it's, it's admirable that you took care of so many trees, but you also took care of your staff. I didn't hear of any injuries or any kind of, I mean, you're putting yourself in a, a situation when you have to deal with that. So good on you for, yeah, well, well done. You've kept it going through COVID. You're coming out of COVID. You're still working tremendous numbers of hours and still are short staffed. And so I hope the city appreciates the city employees they have because you guys are doing a terrific job. Donna stole everything I was going to say. <laughs> everything. So I just want to square that for, for me. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to, you know, follow up on that too, with the, especially dealing with trees. And this is, I mean, I think this, I didn't think it was going to be worse than 2019, but after seeing everything that went down with all the rain, 
it's been a really bad year and you guys have really done really well, not only uh, get, clearing trees and clearing the streets, but also responding to permit requests and dealing with residents, it's been impressive. And just having done several things through the Parks and Recreation Department, like a park rental and swim lessons in the last six months, it's really is worked pretty, pretty seamlessly. It's really nice and easy. So um, I'll give you the, the, the compliment on Smart Rec. I like it a lot. <laughs> so I just I'll just you know reiterate what everybody said. You guys are tremendously impressive. Keep it up, onward and upward. I'll thank Shannon personally because my Rotary Club is playing softball on the field on Sunday, and she's put up with me saying, "What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that?" So thank you for your patience. And again, the, the city is so lucky to have you guys continuing to do what you're doing. So thank you. So our next meeting um, as scheduled is Wednesday, May 10th at 5.30. And I think we have concluded. I call this meeting adjourned.